Good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we are glad to this beautiful spring day. And we are glad to be together. Scripture says we are together again. Just praising the Lord. We are together again in one accord. And then it says something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. So I hope you're expecting something good this morning. Whether you're online, our online family, or you're right here in the auditorium. So right now we will open the service with a word of prayer. You may stand if you're in the auditorium. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. You said where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst. So we welcome your presence, Father, right now in our midst. And we embrace you and we thank you, Father, as our praises go up to you today. We just thank you for the blessings that you will allow to just flow down upon us. So we give you all the praise. We thank you for the praise singers, Father. They have blessed us so many weeks, and we just thank you for them. And as they go for today, Father, let your anointing and your grace fall upon them as they minister. As the word comes for today, Father, let it fall on good ground. Let us not leave here the same way we came in, Lord, but let us feed on your word. Matthew 4, 4 says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of your mouth. So let us take in the word today. Let us take in the praise and worship. And as we go forth into our week, let us be stronger for it and let us apply it to our lives, Father. We just thank you for everyone that is here today. Bless us indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Join with me as we read the opening scripture. Why are you frightened? He asked. Why are your hearts? Okay, sorry for some technical difficulties. Uh, so we'll head with the opening scripture. And it's taken from Luke 24, 38 to 40. 
and it reads, and it reads, why are you frightened? He asked, why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands, look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost because ghosts don't have bodies as you see that I do. As he spoke, he showed them his hands and feet. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Hello, good morning, Love Fellowship. Good morning. I said, good morning, Love Fellowship. Good morning. There we go. Come on, let's get up on our feet. Because we serve an awesome God this morning. If you're here and you're in the building, under the sound of my voice, you have reason to give him praise. You have reason to give him glory. You have reason to lift up the mighty name of Jesus today. He's rightfully due all of our praise. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Say that with us. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So let us do that. Let's do just that today as we enter into praise and worship because he's a glorious God. He's an, awesome, he's an awesome God. Hallelujah. We worship. We praise him. He is worthy. He is worthy. Come on.
soon. We are going to see the king. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the king. Hallelujah, we worship. We worship, we worship, we worship. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause he's never let me down He's faithful through generations so why would he fail now? He won't. Hallelujah. He won't. Come on, I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace. I've got peace that makes no. I won't be going. And I won't be going under. I'm not held by my own strength, cause I built my life on Jesus. He's never let me down, he's faithful in every season. So why, so why would he fail now? He won't. He won't, no, 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 no,
says for a spirit of heaviness to put on the garment of praise on Christ a silent rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand oh rain came and went but my house was built on you Say with you, I'm gonna make it through. Come on, church, sing that. Rain came when blue. My house was built on you. You gotta testify today. I'm safe with you. I'm gonna make it through. Come on, with everything you got. Rain. Jesus, we love you. On Christ, the solid rock we stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you today. Oh, we lift up the name of Jesus. All over this place. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my safety. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your provision. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
That's it. That's it. Let's worship in this place. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. everyone in atmosphere like that take your prayer request out and hold it up to God because he is getting ready to answer everyone take the prayer request out let us hold it up before him you don't have Deacon Hillary, you want to give a few of them the prayer request? These two, this couple here, give them a prayer, give them a card so that I could, oh. Just give these two especially a card. Andrea, where is your prayer request, God? You know, God is getting ready to answer. If he didn't answer yet, Andrea, he's getting ready. Hold it up before him. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thanking you this morning. Thanking you for this atmosphere of praise. Because in atmosphere like that, you're getting ready to work. Father, <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we come in one more time to you with these prayer requests lifted high before you we know that you have al already answered some and you is getting ready to rule her over the rest we are holding it up this morning because we know you are getting ready oh god each and every prayer request here is for a reason so many people right now looking for a job looking for healing Oh God, the children, we praying over the children. Oh God, the children, teacher, we praying over the schools right now. That so many things is going on in these school. Oh God, keep the bullies away from these schools, from our children. Father, we thank you because we know you have already answered most of these requests. I know mine is answered. And I know when Tuesday night, oh God, when the prayer time, let us, oh God, give you thanks and give you praise for answering because we cannot be ungrateful. We have to be grateful for the things that you have done for us. Oh God, touch, touch this morning. And I'm, oh God, Satan, I'm backing you up from each and every one that is standing here right now. Let as the praises go up, we know your blessings is coming down. Oh God, just as you tear that wall down of Jericho, you will tear each and every one of our prayer requests that mean so much to us. We wouldn't write it if it doesn't mean a lot to us. Father, and I'm thanking you and I'm praising you. Oh God, have your way, have your way, have your way. And this morning, God, I am bringing our pastor before you. Just touch her in the name of Jesus. Oh God, give her the oak as she decide to take up the responsibility of God, God of bringing your children where they're supposed to be. Touch her. Give her your strength. Give her your peace and also supply all her needs. In the name of Jesus, I call it done. Amen and amen. Good morning, Love Fellowship. Please stand as we read the word of confession. This is God's word to me. It is my daily bread for spiritual strength. It is my guarantee to always be a winner. It is my strength to overcome all obstacles and challenges. It is the last word on my health, my prosperity, my financial success, my destiny. I now hide it in my heart. Amen. Thank you.
praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. It's a good thing to be in the house of the Lord. I don't know any other place that I would rather be than in God's house uh, this morning. Amen. Amen. Good morning. And whether you're here, sitting here with us or online, as usual, if you're here, we're absolutely thrilled to see you. And we encourage you that you would let us know that you're here by uh, online giving us a little thumbs up, uh, a heart emoji to tell us that you love us and that you're happy to be here. And I encourage you to continue to engage in worship and uh, engage as we do, we will in, in God's word. Um, thank you to our praise team who has primed us to receive God's word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, you know, and I have to say a special thank you to uh, Brother Kenny today. He knows how much I love um, Andre Crouch. And I will sing on an Andre Crouch any day, any time. So that's a special gift to me this morning. And I thank you for that. Um, for our online brothers and sisters, um, we are, again, we are just so happy to, um, that you're here and, and worshiping with us. Um, we can include everything, all, uh, uh, let me just say this. I would, especially to our folks that are, might be listening online or watching online, you know, in addition to an emoji or a thumbs up or a message, I want to encourage you also, if you have a prayer request, um, type it in on, on there, you know, pray for my child, pray for my um, job, whatever it is, type it in, on in there and then um, this way that we can include it during our times of intercession. Eh? Amen. Um, so let's begin with a word of prayer. Bow your heads with me and we will uh, say a quick word of prayer. Lord, we come eager to receive what you have to say to us this morning through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, I remember that as a child, I thought that uh, certain celebration days took so very long to come. Um, Christmas and Easter and um, school holidays and birthdays, it seemed like it was an eternity before these uh, special days would come each year. And it seems that, um, it seems to me now that uh, the months moved so slowly, uh, you know, that I would almost forget that these special days were part of the calendar of my life. But as I grew older, which obviously, um, you probably can't tell it, but I have grown older. As I grew older, it seemed uh, the reverse happened and with, uh, and with so much greater speed. Uh, you know, I was thinking about it and the year 2024 is already almost 33% or one third over the, uh, the year 2024. The century that we live in now, uh, as I look around, maybe the babies uh, weren't back there back then, but how many of you can remember when the new millennium was coming in, you know, and you had to buy food and stock it up and hide it and all of those things. But the century we now live in is almost 25% over, one quarter over. Time truly waits for no man, right? As the uh, 
uh, writer Alice Walker says, time moves slowly, but it passes quickly. Somehow we have relegated the stories of Jesus's birth and death to certain times of year um, in, in church, and we don't visit these two significant events, the, the birth of Jesus and his crucifixion. Uh, we visit those things only at certain times of the year. So in December, we talk about Christmas and the shepherds and and, and Mary, and, and so on. And we don't talk about that anymore after that, right? And the same thing with, with at Easter time. We uh, talk about the crucifixion and what Jesus went through on the cross and so on. And we only talk about Jesus' birth and death at specific, at those specific times. But um, we... Uh, among a couple of us, we chatted a little bit, and for the next couple of weeks, we won't take, uh, we, we want to take, I'm sorry, a little more extended look at what occurred after the death and resurrection of Jesus. It's important, and as I said, most times, you know, we just deal with what happened around his death and around his crucifixion and his resurrection. Um, but it's what happens afterwards is very, very important. It's important because it was after this, after the crucifixion and the resurrection, that the church was born. Before that, there was no church, right? There was no church. And it is interesting and amazing the things that happened after Jesus's crucifixion and subsequent uh, resurrection that the church came into its own. We, the, the Bible records an amazing move of God after the resurrection, how God moved not only locally, because most times when we read about uh, Jesus and his work, we, we read the Gospels, we read that he healed people, we, re we read that he went about doing good and, and feeding the 5,000 and so on. And those were amazing, amazing things. But we recognize that after Jesus died and resurrected, now it exploded. It was a time when the ch it was no longer relegated just to Galilee and Jerusalem and, and Judea, but now the vision was going to go to the uttermost parts of the world. On the third day after his death, we know that early in the morning, and we talked about this a little bit last week, certain women, according to Jewish uh, custom, they went to the tomb where Jesus was buried to anoint uh, Jesus's body. Uh, and that's something that they did routinely in after someone had passed away. Okay, um, among the women was Mary Magdalene. And Mary Magdalene is who I would like to talk with you briefly about today. Um, there are so many Marys um, in in the in the scriptures that maybe you might get a little, some of them confused, right? There was Mary, the mother of Jesus, and then there was Mary Magdalene and a couple other Marys. Um, but we're specifically talking uh, about Mary Magdalene today. Mary Magdalene um, was from uh, a particular. Uh, town, and she is, although not very well known, but she's very, very prominent in the life of Jesus. I personally have not heard many sermons about her, but she is one of the most mentioned characters in the story of Jesus's life on earth. Uh, more so 
we know that Jesus had 12 disciples. Am I right? How many think that you could name all 12 of the disciples? Probably not, right? Because the Bible doesn't really talk about the others. We know about Peter and we know uh, about um, John and so on. But there were 12, and of course we know about Judas, but there was 12 of them in all. And we don't, the Bible doesn't talk very much about these other ones. But Mary Magdalene is mentioned in every gospel, in Matthew, in Mark, in Luke, in John. And she, her story is told over and over, and many references uh, are made to Mary Magdalene. When Jesus was crucified, Mary stayed at the foot of the cross until he had died and then uh, taken down from the cross and um, uh, buried in the tomb. Mary Magdalene, we don't, actually, we don't know exactly who she was, but we do know that after Jesus cast seven devils out of her, and um, if you are curious of, about what do you mean he cast seven devils out of We don't have time to talk about it, but trust me, he did. Amen? He, he gave her uh, an absolute exorcism. But Jesus cast seven devils out of her, and she became a devoted follower and supporter of Jesus. Anywhere he went, Mary was there. Amen? She traveled with him. And she committed her life to caring for him as he went about teaching and preaching and healing. She was there as he withstood the agony and the subsequent death on the cross. The days after his death had been excruciating for Mary excruciatingly painful for Mary because she loved Jesus so very much. She had been the one, uh, he had been with the one, excuse me, to radically change Mary's life. Her, when Mary thought about her life before Jesus and when she thought about her life after Jesus, she could not help but support him and be there and be to him what he had been to her. Amen? So Mary comes in, the, the story is told that Mary comes at early in the morning and she goes to the tomb. And when she goes to the tomb, Jesus, she, she doesn't find Jesus. He's not there. She was in a space of grief and sadness and suffering because Jesus was gone. He was missing from the tomb. So when Mary and the other women arrived at the tomb, little did they know that their whole world was about to change. Little did they know that this day that had dawned Pretty, like, pretty much like every other day dawning was going to be an absolutely amazing day for them. When they get, get to the tomb and they realize that Jesus is not there, Mary goes back to Peter. She runs back to Peter and she tells Peter, Peter, the, he's not there. He, this, they have taken him. And she's, and she's distraught. So uh, Peter tells uh, his, him and his company, his other friends, let's go and see what, you know, happened. Let's see if maybe she's mistaken and so on. Because I, and I'll pause right here to say that things back in those days, things that women said didn't mean much, Right. Um, women couldn't testify in court. They couldn't bring a, a charge against 
um, an individual, none of that could happen because women were women, right? How many of you are glad that you didn't live back then? Uh-huh. <laughs> we're so uh, excited about the fact that we've come a long way, baby, and we're glad for that. But always, and, and I'll just pause to say this, that as you read the scriptures, you will find that Jesus always gave full respect, full honor. He, he broke barriers as far as it uh, pertained to women. And so we thank him for that. Amen? We praise God. He's a, a champion of women, and we are grateful to him for that. But we'll talk about that at another time. So Mary goes back to Peter, tells him that Jesus uh, is missing, his body is missing. Peter and, uh, and his company, his companions, go to the tomb, and sure enough, they, they look around and they had to admit, you know, she was right. He was not there. They uh, go back and they find out exact, trying to find out exactly what happened. But Jesus' body is still missing. Feel, feeling pretty devastated and, and, and disappointed, Peter and his companions leave Mary at the tomb. You could imagine she's weeping. She's overcome with grief. Until she sees a man who she assumes is the gardener. Because the tomb was in a... Uh, a garden. The tomb was situated in a garden. And Mary sees this man and she assumes that, you know what, this must be the gardener. And so Mary uh, does not recognize that this is Jesus. Now, did I tell you that she was always with Jesus? Didn't I tell you that? Yeah, she, anywhere he went, Mary was there. Amen? But she sees this uh, man that she assumes is the gardener. And she doesn't recognize that who she's looking at is actually Jesus. For, and often, if we apply this o even into our own lives, we don't always recognize God's presence with us. Especially when we are overcome with any strong emotion. You know, when someone uh, that we love passes away or when uh, we have lost our job or there's some kind of emergency or dilemma in, in the family, sometimes we panic, don't we? And you know what? If you, how many of you have ever panicked over something? Absolutely. I know that I have panicked. I've panicked when someone that I love uh, uh, is ill and, and, and close to death, and that has happened in my own life several times. I have panicked when, you know, something that I expected to go one way went another way. And so we could maybe cut... Uh, Cut Mary a little bit of slack, right? She was overcome. She was emotional. She, she probably didn't even look that closely at this person, this man. We wonder where he is in our situations when we are in a dire situation. We wonder where he is in our situation when we're overcome with grief or fear or disappointment or worry or uncertainty and so on. Mary is closed off from recognizing him until Jesus does something absolutely brilliant. Jesus says her name and immediately she knows that this is the voice of Jesus. He had called her many, many times before. How many of you that um, when 
you could be in a crowd with 50 kids, but when your kid says mommy, you know, right? Absolutely. You just know. And this is exactly what happened with Mary. Jesus called her by name. How many know that he knows your name? We have sung it over and over again. He knows my name. Amen? He knows the number of hairs on my head, the, the scriptures say. For some of us, that one won't take too much counting by God, but we thank him for what we have. Amen? Uh, the Bible says he knows when every bird falls from the sky. He knows your uprising. He knows your down sitting. When you go out, he knows. When you come in, he knows. Praise God for a God that is omnipresent, omniscient, knows it all, knows me and knows you and can know all of us at the same time. Amen? So suddenly Mary hears, she sees, she knows, and she recognizes that it is Jesus, the one whom she so loved. She goes from indescribable grief, and now Mary is unspeakably joyful. Let us never forget, I want to encourage you today that we should never forget that he is Emmanuel. The Bible says he is God with us. Amen. The one who has promised never to leave us, never to forsake us. And today, as we look at Mary's story and her reaction to the risen Jesus, we can say that we, it, it doesn't matter what situation that we find ourselves in. As children of God, I want to encourage you today, know that the Lord is aware. You know that he knows exactly what you're going through. Know that you, he knows exactly where you are. He's, after all, he's omnipotent God. Some people can't comprehend that. Like, well, how can he know what's going on with me here and know what's going on, you know, in some, with someone with Chicago and someone who lives in Africa or Australia because he's omnipotent God. Amen? We serve an omnipotent God. I want you today to reflect and think about uh, and give God a note of thanks that in our darkest hours, he, he, he has been there with us. He is indeed Emmanuel, God with us. He extended his peace. He has extended his grace. He has extended his comfort. I know that for me, and I, the best person to talk about is yourself, right? So um, I know that I have been in situations with family members and people that I love that where things were so dire, things were so serious. I didn't know what was going to happen. It, it could be a fatal uh, uh, situation or God could come through and work a miracle. And I, and frankly, I did not know what would happen. Anybody ever been there? Absolutely. Especially when it comes to, uh, you know, our loved ones, right? Um, how many people were uh, uh, absolutely shaken by, in the literal sense and the uh, figurative sense, you were shaken by the, the earthquake this past, yeah. Um, you know, thank God I didn't feel it, um, but <laughs> I did not feel it. But, you know, it, it sort of panicked a lot of people. Those times when you don't even sense God's presence, I want you to know that even though your emotions might be so heavy, 
but I want you to know that he is there with you. He has promised never to leave you. He has promised never to forsake you. He has promised never to leave you. He has promised never to forsake you. He knows your name. He knows your situation. He knows your need. He knows what you are going through. And he will speak a word of reassurance to you. He will let you know that he is there with you. Amen? Amen? Could we give the Lord a hand clap for that? For his abiding presence. For the fact that he never leaves us and he never forsakes us. It is so avail. I, 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 I want to just uh, stop right now um, and encourage you. If you're sitting here and um, daily Bible reading is a bit of a challenge for you, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Um, but if, if you, in your heart, you would say, you know what? You're right. I, I mean to read the Bible, but, uh, you know, I get busy or I fall asleep when I take it out or whatever the situation is. God doesn't condemn you and neither do I. So this is not an act of condemnation, but it's encouragement to you to pick up and read God's word every day. Amen? It is so available today. There, there's version. there's all kinds of apps and so on that will, um, what will uh, give you Bible verses, give you a little breakdown of what it means or the significance of it. Um, even here at our church, we have a, uh, a monthly devotional that you can just go on the gram. You didn't know I know. <laughs> I know. I know it. Um, you can go on the gram and you could see us and um, our uh, daily, monthly. It's, it's, only, it's 10 days out of the month. And, um, you know, I really got a... a, a really a, a burden for doing it. And then I said, ah, but you know what? Nobody really reads it. So why am I doing this? You know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I guess getting caught up in that whole thing, but looking, oh, did someone like it? Or did someone read it? Or did someone? And so I kind of said, well, maybe Lord, I missed you. You know, maybe uh, there's so much awesome stuff out there. Um, do we really, really need another devotional? And I kid you not, in the last two, I would say two weeks or so, um, I have had 15 people say to me, how come you don't put out the uh, devotional anymore? Amen. And so, you know, I, it, it, it just taught me that lesson that when God says to do something, just go ahead and do it. You know what I mean? When he, tell, when he gives you a, a, you don't know when you uh, uh, are saying a word to someone, a word of encouragement. You don't know when God puts someone on your heart and you pray for that person. Sometimes you, you know, you're like, oh, pray for her. Okay, Lord, I'll pray for her. And come to find out that that was ex exactly the time that that person needed that prayer. Amen? That intercession. So that's a, a, a good reminder to obey God's word. But back to my encouragement to you to pick up God's word. Read it. Start in the Psalms. Start in the... It, it, well, the Proverbs, you know, they, uh, they're a little challenging, um, I would say. Uh, but start in the Gospels, because the Gospels will really tell you about Jesus. It will tell you about his, his miracles, his, his teaching, his, his, uh, uh, the times that he interacted. And notice also 
the, the people that he interacted with. Jesus spoke to people who were in the palace and he spoke to people who were in the prison. He is no respecter of person and I love him for it. Amen. Because, amen. Because even in my own life, when I stop and think, you know, a little girl from a, a poor family living in Jamaica and, you know, probably not destined to make any mark on society or any of those things, right? But, and, and I don't live in the White House, probably won't, uh, <laughs> probably won't. But you know what? Jesus is as concerned about that person in the White House, that person in the palace, that person who is in, 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 in the, the uh, mansion on a hill, He's as much concerned about that person, he's concerned about you to that same degree. And I want you to know that he is a good and faithful, faithful God. Amen? He has promised that when we call upon him while we are yet speaking, while we're talking, he hears us. David says it this way, and I love it. David says, and I'm going to read it for you. It says, this poor man cried, and he heard me and delivered me out of all of my trouble. Amen? Wow, if he did it for David, if he did it for uh, Mary, he will do it for you. Finally, you know, as I said, I love God's sense of humor. Um, Jesus orchestrated it so that it was a woman of the two genders, the one supposedly the inferior gender, but it was a woman who was the first to see the resurrected Christ. Mary Magdalene, with her past, with her history, but yet and still, God orchestrated it so that she was the first one. She, she actually was the first evangelist. She ran out and she said, you know what? Come see him. He's risen. Amen. She was the one that delivered the good news of the resurrection of Jesus uh, to Peter, to uh John, to all of these people that we revere, and we should because they were Jesus' disciples, but, you know, she was, the, she was the first one to get out there and tell them that the Lord was risen. And today, I want to challenge you that uh, as we proceed through looking at uh, the other um, incidences. Jesus, uh, after his resurrection, Jesus was on the earth for 40 days before his ascension. And during those uh, 40 days, he had many encounters. And we're just going to take the next couple of months and uh, uh, not months, weeks rather, I'm sorry. We're just going to take the next couple of weeks and go through and look at exactly what the implications of Jesus's resurrection and his 40 days on, uh, on the earth before he ascended to heaven and who he talked to and where did he go and so on. Because this, this was the beginning of the church. This was when the concept of the worldwide church, Jesus said, go into all the world not just to Judea, not just to Samaria, not just to Galilee, but go into all the world and preach the gospel. And you know what? Our girl Mary, she was the first one. She was the first one. And I thank God for that today. Today, if you're here and you sort of relegated um, Easter to, you know, last week okay we went through easter we had our easter outfits and so on and we hang them up in the closet 
Um, I'm just going to tell on myself. Let me just tell you. We're family, right? Um, somebody said to me last week, oh, PM, that's me, right? PM, if, if, I, if you hear someone call me PM, that's fine. I'm totally accepted. Someone said to me last week, PM, I love your, um, your, your outfit, and um, it looks so nice on you. Where, and, the, and, and someone else said to me, where did you get that outfit um, from? Where did you buy it? And I said, I took it right out of my closet because it was the same outfit that I wore last year. <laughs> Amen? And I said that all of that to say that as we, uh, uh, it, but you know what? It hung in my closet for a whole year. I never wore it again after that, Carol. I never, I never took it down. Uh, I put it in the cleaners, then I hung it up, and then I took it down again. But the fact of the matter is that even though we sort of relegate some things to sometimes, well, oh, that's my Easter outfit, or this is my Christmas outfit, or, or, or any of those things, but the, the, the fact of the matter is that we are going to investigate a little bit, a look at, and others from our congregation will come up here and talk with you and, and, and look at uh, the different incidences that occurred uh, after Jesus' resurrection. And so today, I want to tell you, I want to share with you, if you're online, that if you uh, are here today and you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, I want to let you know that he can be Emmanuel to you. Amen. He can be Emmanuel to you and to you and to you and to you, even if you're sitting watching us on the screen. Amen. He can be God with us is the meaning of Emmanuel, but he can be God with you. The fact that he is God with me doesn't mean that he can't be God with you. That's how powerful our Savior is. And he bled and he died and he rose again to bring you into relationship with him. He did all that so that when you get on your knees, when you are in that dark place like Mary Magdalene was, when you feel like there's no hope, he wants to be be your Emmanuel. He wants to be your present God. He wants to be the one that you turn to when things are, don't go the way that you uh, expect them or want them to go. Amen? So today, as we bow our heads, I want every everyone in, in this auditorium and those even online, if you are here and you see your need for a relationship with God and Christ, who has made you able to have a relationship with God through his death on the cross, I want you to bow your heads and repeat this prayer with me. Amen. Say, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, I acknowledge my need for a savior. I ask you to wash me from my sins and make me a child of yours. I believe that you died and you rose again that I might be saved. Thank you for salvation. Thank you that I am now a child of yours. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you have said those words, if you have made that request of God, this is the first time that you have, I know we...
he referred to it as the sinner's prayer. Well, you know what? It's a prayer that we've all had to say at some point. And there's no shame in it. Amen? There's no shame. You know, uh, it, it, would be, it would be ludicrous if you needed help with something and you didn't ask for it. Amen? So if you are sitting in this congregation today, and this was the first time that you said that prayer, where you asked the Lord to come into your life, I want you to find one of our ushers, find one of the people that you see around here um, in the many times that you might have been here and say to them, you know what? I said that prayer when we repeated it uh, uh, just a couple of minutes ago. And they will take your information. They will, um, and so that we can follow you up. We'll give you a book that will start you off uh, reading, getting to know this Jesus that we love and that we worship. Amen? Amen. God is a good God. We thank him. Uh, and, and let me just tell you one last thing about, do you know, um, and I know, you know, we have differences of interpretation and, op and opinions and so on with the established Catholic church or whatever. But do you know that Mar uh, Mary Magdalene is regarded by the Catholic church as an apostle? Amen. She didn't get it in life because really and truly she was the one that would probably um, fit the bill for um, replacing Judas among the 11. But because of her gender, she wasn't given that position. They put Matthias in there and made him the 12th apostle. Uh, uh, apostle. And, um, but you know what? Though it tarries, it will come to pass. G Our God is, such, is, is a God who, even though you, are, might be, you might be in a situation where you don't get your just due, you don't get your just deserts. You don't get what you deserve. Man might try to take it away from you. But you know what? God is a God. He sits high, but he looks low. Amen? And we love him today. Give the Lord a hand clap today. Hallelujah. And I'm going to invite you uh, to come back next week. And um, you will hear from uh, one, someone else in our congregation and they will take, continue to take us through those 40 days that Jesus was here until his ascension. Would you do that? Amen. Praise God. God bless you today. God bless you today. Amen. Um, at this time, we have a really special, very, very special um, special thing that we are going to do. And um, I am just going to, okay, I got the signal. I'm just going to call the, um, the people who are involved. Um, we are going to have a baby dedication. Everybody say, ah, oh, we are going to have a baby dedication today. Amen. So I'm going to ask you to come up, parents, godparents, grandma, auntie, siblings, whomever, you can come right up here and um, stand in front. Come up and 
little bit more. First of all, I just want to say a huge congratulations to both of you for uh, this beautiful, beautiful baby boy. He's absolutely amazing. And uh, congratulations to the aunties. Con congratulations to grandmas and everyone that's here. I can tell that this little boy is very much loved. Um, the fact that so many of you would come out here today um, for uh, this time of dedication for him tells me that he is in the right place, that he is passionately loved. And um, we're gonna pray for him today, amen. You know, the Bible recounts an occasion when uh, children gathered around Jesus and the disciples said, try to shoo them away, like, you know, get away. Um, you guys shouldn't be here. But Jesus' response was to say, let the little children come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of of heaven. Amen. Jesus himself loved children. He appreciated children. And I believe when they are touched by his hand, I believe that on that occasion that the Bible talks about the, the, the children coming to Jesus, I believe that when he touched them, they were never the same. I believe that when they had an encounter with him, they were never the same. So I commend you, both of you, mom and dad, for bringing little Amiri, right? Amiri. <laughs> for bringing little Amiri, this precious baby boy who wants to tell me something, right? Yes. <laughs> he likes me. Okay. Um, this precious baby boy to be presented to the Lord and to dedicate yourselves as parents and yourselves as his family to dedicate yourselves to God. We are urged in scripture to bring our children to the Lord. Not that this automatically uh, makes them, you know, uh, different or Christian or holy, but it indicates that as parents, you will provide the environment and the training that the little ones need to guide them to accept Jesus Christ as their personal and indwelling savior when they come to that age. Secondly, um, to, the, uh, to the family, family members, to godparents, are there any godparents? Okay, okay. To the godparents and friends that stand here, uh, I want you to know by standing here, you are saying that you are willing to support these parents, that you are going to be there for them in their efforts to raise a Mary. So we're going to pray the prayer of dedication of little Mary to the Lord, that God would place his hand of blessing on him. Do you agree that we want God to place his hand of blessing on this child? I wanted the, everyone sitting in the congregation to just stretch your hand over to a Mary right now as we pray. Sounds 
Amen. Yes. <laughs> Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We pray your divine protection over this little one. Keep him safe as he learns to walk and to run and to speak. Father, I pray that you will keep him safe from all dangers seen and unseen. I pray you would keep him in good health all the days of his life. Help him to grow strong and healthy. I pray for every organ of his body, every muscle, every tissue. I pray for his bloodstream, his eyesight, his hearing, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray for his intellect. Give him the ability to reason and to think critically as he grows and even as he enters school. We pray for emotional wellness for a Mary. Make him well-adjusted, able to love and to accept love. God, give him a kind and generous and empathetic spirit. We rebuke the enemy that will try to get him off track. Make, uh, try to get him to make poor decisions or foolish choices as he grows and as he matures. God, I pray that you would reveal yourself to a Mary and give him a passionate love for you. Finally, we pray for these parents, for the godparents and the family of this child. May they seek only what's best for a Mary. May they surround him with love, help Teach him to love himself, teach him to love others, and teach him to love you. Give them the wisdom to make good and healthy decisions that would impact this precious little one. Give this family love for him, for each other, and for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Amen. Bless God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Can you, can you just bring him? He's a rock star today. So can you just put him right, hold him up right here so that everybody can see him? Amen. Amen. He's just beautiful. Just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you for standing here with them and um, uh, invite me when he's getting married, okay? All right. <laughs> I'll be there. God bless you all. Thank you so very much for coming. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Um, at this time, we're going to continue to worship God in our giving. Um, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 68, Paul talked about God love a cheerful giver and how we must sow bountifully. But when you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. And, you know, he also talked about um, God grace and we know that God grace is his unmerited favor so once you give with a cheerful heart not grudgingly not make nobody should force you to give you have to give from your heart because this is what God is going to look at he's going to look at your heart to see how you gave whether you gave a dollar whether you gave a hundred dollar God is looking at your heart to see, and he's going to bless you. He's going to bless you bountifully. He's going to make sure that you have sufficient all that you need because that's what he promised in his word. And we know that God's word will not return void unto him. So at this time, these are the ways that we give into this ministry. 
the ways that we gave is through Zelle or QuickPay, and you can use the telephone number 718-306-4757, or you can use our email address, lfny at lovefellowshipny.org. Next, we do timely giving, and you can give online or by your mobile phone. Text GAVE to 646-846-4549. We also give, you can create, um, write out a check to Love Fellowship NY. Um, we also, sorry, I should have said anyone that need an envelope. Um, the ushers on the pass out the envelope. Um, but you can make your check out to Love Fellowship NY. Um, if you're online, you can mail it to Post Office Box 1116, Baldwin, New York, 11510. And that's the way the ushers are going to walk around and they, with the basket, and you can place your offering in the basket. Anyone that needs an envelope, if you could just raise your hand, and the ushers will um, give you an, an envelope. Um, at this time, also, I'm just going to do um, one announcement. Whilst um, after my announcement, um, Celise or Simone will come with the other announcement. And the announcement I'm going to talk about is our Mother's Day brunch that we are having on May 11th. This is celebrating women. Okay, um, you may not, uh, your mother may not be alive, but you have a sister, a cousin, um, someone that is a mother, um, someone that raised you or impact your life to, to, for you to be the woman that you are today. You can invite them, buy a ticket for them. Um, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful event. We're going to have our guest uh, performance by our own Kenny and Simone. And we also, which I failed to mention last week, going to um, do a special video tribute. If you want to do a video tribute to your mother, your aunt, whoever you want to do it to, um, please, it's three minutes. You can do a video to three minutes, and we will have the... Uh, link that you will um, email that video to so that um, our IT team IT. IT team will put it all together to present it at, um, at the, the event. Um, like I said, it's Caribbean American buffet style. We're trying to incorporate every island and American food so you can have your pick and you're going to have a wonderful time. We have giveaways and special gifts. So come out and have a blast and celebrate yourself as a female, as a woman. Um, celebrate your mother. And we know there is men that is raising their own children. Come out and celebrate because you are stepping into that role also. So have a blessed day. Amen, amen. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a blessing to see all these beautiful faces here that showed up for the Lord, right? Give yourself a hand clap for being here. God sees your effort. Um, we also want to mention a few things in our announcements. So we don't want you to miss our Monday night intercessory prayer that is um, every Monday from 8 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Um, it's on a conference call line. And the number you would call is 712-432-3900. And we have our code. All of our codes are up here. Um, oh, so take a picture if you need it so you don't forget. All right. Um, we need God more than just on a Sunday. I don't know about you, but I need him every day. Every day. Amen. Um, also join us on our Tuesday night um, fellowship group calls. Um, so we have three fellowship groups and we have three prayer lines. Um, so you'll see the same number to call is right up here, 712-432-3900. And you can join one of our three fellowship group calls, okay? Um, those numbers are up there. If you want to be placed into a fellowship group, you can ask our ushers about more information 
Um, and, you know, you don't have to say much. You can just be on prayer, ask for prayer. Um, we all need prayer and prayer changes things. Amen. Um, and also we want you to sign up for our text messaging service. We have a lot, a lot of new things coming up. Um, we don't want you to miss it. We also don't want you to miss um, the song that we'll be doing every Sunday um, for you to learn during the week so that you can fellowship with us. We want you to worship with us. Amen. We want the Holy Spirit to be filled in this room. And we want you to sing along, dance along, and praise the Lord. All right? So um, it's a 718-306-4757. You can just literally shoot a text message over right now and just say, join. And you will start receiving our text message alerts with everything that I've announced today. It'll just come to you. And you can um, join at your convenience and always know what's up and coming at Love Fellowship Church. All right? Um, and also, guys, uh, we're bringing something back that's really exciting. Um, I'm excited. We are bringing our fellowship groups um, in person. Um, so we want you to make sure that you're here on uh, April 14th. Um, and immediately after service, we're going to meet up. We're going to break up into the fellowship groups. This is the one that's on the phone. But we're going to have one all together in person so that we can actually talk to each other in person and fellowship in person. There's a big difference. All right. There'll also be food and, and, and we'll just have a good time. All right. So don't be scared. Come on out, bring a friend if you want to, um, and join us for our in-person fellowship group on April 14th. All right. And of course, get your tickets for the May 11th Mother's Day brunch. All right. Amen. Hey everyone, come on, y'all tired? Come on. I'm here to close us out today. How many had a good time today in the presence of the Lord? Yeah, yes. Uh, big shout out to PM for that awesome message today. Oh, God bless you for your strength. Continue strength and, and courage. You know we're praying for you. We love you, we love you, we love you. Um, Shout out to uh, Amiri and Amiri's parents for that baby dedication today. Yeah. Teach him the way that he should go, and when he is old, he shall not depart from it. So it starts now. It starts now. I remember when Josiah, my son, was born. As soon as he popped out, I was like, yes. And I started singing blessings unto him in the, in the labor room. Right then and there, the Lord bless you and keep you right there in the, in the room. And so I became the singing dad that, that, that few couple of days. You're the singing dad. We heard about you in the labor room because you got to start immediately because once that baby comes out, the enemy is like, I'm bringing him back. I'm bringing him back to my side. So you guys are doing an awesome thing there. And we are praying with you, praying for you and for Amiri and for your families. Uh, we also want to give a shout out to you guys, Andrea and, and, and your family that is here, um, Malaysia, your children, uh, your your your. Andrea, your children, Malaysia, and um, yeah, she's like, Malaysia's like, I have one child, brother, one child. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, and all of every, everyone that came to support you guys, uh, also want to let you guys know that the doors to this church, Love Fellowship, are always open to you. So you don't have to just come for a baby dedication, all right? Come as you are. We want you in the house of the Lord because the Lord wants you in his house. So we are just, we are just here to open our arms and welcome you in and let the Father do what he wants to do with you and through you for the kingdom. You may feel like, and this is not just you guys, anyone in, per, in particular, you may feel like, well, what I do and what I'm able to do or my skills or lack of, I don't know if God can use that. God can use it all. We saw how he used Mary Magdalene. He delivered her from seven demons and here she is, the first one to run out there and say, he's risen, he's alive, he's here. Trust me, trust me when I tell you that he's here. So let us continue to love on the Lord, continue to chase after him because he will always knock on the door of your heart. This right here is a knock and there'll be another one maybe later today or tomorrow, but the Lord will always knock on the door of your heart. 
because he wants you to come and know him. He wants you to have relationship with him. He wants you to have your relationship with him, not the relationship your mama has with him or your father has with him or your auntie or your grandmama had. He wants you to have a relationship with him. So come to him as you are. Lay it down at his feet. Let him handle what needs to be handled. Let him wash you. As I said before, people go, oh, I'm waiting to get some things together. I want to get some things in order. The, the Father, Jesus, washes your sins away. He washes you white as snow. You don't go into the shower, and before going into the shower, you clean yourself up. You step into the shower, and you let the water run down and clean you, wash you, make you fresh again. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ does. So you don't have to wash yourself, clean yourself before you come under the, the washing of the Lord Jesus Christ's blood. You just come. You just come. All right? So... I'm finished preaching for today. I'm preaching next weekend, so come next weekend. All right, I'm going to be preaching next. No, I really am. I'm, she's laughing. She thought, she thought I was a joke. No, no punchline. I'm preaching next weekend. <laughs> All right, as we continue this message on the ascension of Jesus, before the ascension, leading up to the ascension of Jesus Christ, because uh, as PM brought up, we always talk about Easter. We always talk about the, 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 the resurrection. We always celebrate that he is risen. But so much happened when he came back, when he rose and he walked the earth for those 40 days. A lot happened. A lot was shifted. A lot was shared in those 40 days that helped us, that help us to this day. Okay? So we're going to be talking about that, unpacking that in the next few weeks. And um, it's just awesome to see all of you today. It's awesome. I'm so happy to be in the house of the Lord with all of you today as we continue to chase after him. And love on the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to pray a benediction over all of us today. Um, so let's get up on our feet as we close. And um, I didn't forget, now that I got you all standing, I want to give a big shout out to Pastor Marcia, PM, because today is her birthday. <laughs> so so before, so what we're going to do is before we do the benediction, we're going to sing to you. We're going to sing happy birthday, all right? Because rightfully do. We're going to love on you. We're going to love on you. So all together now, if you know the harmonies, do it. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing, all right? So come on. Happy birthday to you. I can't hear you. Come on. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Yeah. We love you. We appreciate you. And like I said, we're praying for you, praying for your continued strength, praying for your continued fortitude as the Lord continues to strengthen you in this time. Um, and uh, as we look to the screen, we got the screen. Y'all seen this? Moving on up. Pastor Ronnie, we did it. This was his idea. This was his idea. Oh, we miss him. So let's go ahead and let's close. And after we close, I want you guys to say hello to a few people, some of the people that are here visiting. Love on them. Share the love of Christ. Stir up love and good works, as the Bible says. Give a high five, a fist, uh, a fist bump, an elbow bump, whatever works, and whatever they're comfortable with, all right? So let's lift up our hands in the presence of the Lord today as we pray this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you, give you favor in all things. May his angels encamp round about you and deliver you from all evil. May the Lord meet all your needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. May the Lord bless you when you come in and when you go out. But above all, may he give you his peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. One more thing. Hold on. The producers are telling me something. That's right. Not only are we, did, we, did we sing happy birthday, but we're going to cut some cake. All right? So in the back in the cafeteria after this, right after you say hello to some people, oh, yeah, surprise. We loving on you today. All right? So we're going to go to the back, and we're going to cut some cake and just say, say some, some beautiful things to Pastor Marcy and just love on her today. All right? We love you. And let's go. Let's go cut some cake. Say hello to some people. Fist bump. 
High five. Give them a hug if they're comfortable. 